Hi guys, my name is Alan Schwartz, and it is an honor to preach the Word of God today. I'm so excited for what the Lord pressed upon my heart about the parable of the wandering sheep in Matthew 18, 12 through 14. So let's read that together if you have a Bible in hand or a Bible app. It says, what do you think if a man owns a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away? Will he not leave the 99 on the hills and go to look for the one that wandered off? And if he finds it, truly I tell you, he is happier about that one sheep than about the 99 that did not wander off. In the same way, your father in heaven is not willing that any of these little ones should perish. Let's close our eyes and pray. Heavenly Father, you are such a great, great father. Lord, you care so much about us, Lord, that you don't want to see one perish. You want to see all come to know you, Lord. What an awesome God you are, Father God. Let us be sheep that follow you as our shepherd, Lord, all the days of our lives. Let us be more like you each and every day, and let us lead others to Christ, because we don't want to perish as well. And we don't want our brothers and sisters and loved ones to perish. And even pray for those that are our enemies, Lord, that they would come to know you as their Lord and Savior. We all say this in your precious and holy and perfect name. Amen. I want to start off by saying with the story. I remember when I was young, I was probably like six years old. I was on vacation and I was with my family and I went to a store with my dad. I wanted to hang out with him, but something terrifying happened. I got lost. I, I remember I lost sight of my dad and I wasn't paying attention. And it just was like for a split two seconds and I lost track of where my dad was. So I did not follow his lead and I got lost. I eventually would find my parents, but without following someone's lead, it made it extremely difficult to find them. And I was in harm. I could have, someone could have taken me. I was scared half to death until I finally found my parents. And why I'm saying this is because this reminds me of our good shepherd, our heavenly father. When we get lost and we go astray, we're also in danger. But Jesus, being who he is, he cares for us so deeply and loves us so much that he seeks us out and paid the ultimate price to redeem us. The gospel here and this passage is all about God who loves us all, his sheep, and gives his beloved son for the salvation of all, that he doesn't want any of us to perish, to be lost, or to be in harm, or to be in danger. Jesus searches high and low for a sheep. He never gives up looking and longing for us. When we are lost, we get confused, discouraged, disoriented, and we're in great danger because sheep are dependent on the shepherd for everything. They require constant care. So leaving them unintended put them at great risk and greatly endanger their lives. In this passage of Matthew 18, 12 through 14, this passage is telling the story of a shepherd. He has a hundred sheep and just one of them goes astray and is lost. But what's so fascinating is he finds that unacceptable and heartbreaking. He wants no one to be lost. The shepherd, so what the shepherd does, he leaves the 99 sheep to go after the one astray and lost sheep. And for me, if I got 99% on a test in school, I think I'm rejoicing and doing great. But for the Lord, he's like, no, that's not sufficient enough. I want everyone to come to me because I'm the great shepherd. I don't want anyone to perish and not spend eternity in heaven with me. You guys, this is a parable, a parable about the characteristics that we are to have as great followers of Christ. I always think of a parable this way. It's something that's happening on earth that reveals also something happening in heaven. So church, it's our responsibility to extend a helping hand to those who've went astray. Make sure we're following our shepherd and be alert and sober mind. As it tells us in 1 Peter 5, 8, it says, be alert and of sober mind because your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, said that. <laughs> in this verse, Peter wrote this 
to warn us that suffering isn't just physical warfare, but it's also spiritual warfare too. Peter is telling us in 1 Peter 5, 8, he's telling us that we tend to focus on the sufferings of this world and dwell so much on them that we forget to follow our Lord and Savior, that we forget about our goals as well. We tend to lose our act when we are put into hardships and when persecution comes our way. We tend to just let our emotions overpower us. Even if we know that our goal is to be strong in the Lord and to follow him. Brothers and sisters, we're just like sheep and not in the way they look, but the way they act, the way that we act. And here are just five ways. It was very hard to just narrow it down, but here are five ways that we are like sheep. The first way, if you're writing notes um, at home, please take these down, jot these down. The first one, sheep follow others blindly. And that's because sheep have an instinct to follow the sheep in front of them, even if they're in harm. For instance, when one sheep decides to go somewhere, the rest of the flock usually follows, even if it's not a good decision. For example, sheep will follow each other to slaughter. If one jumps off a cliff, the others are likely to follow because they have no sense of direction. They cannot defend themselves in times of trouble. And for the person who's gone astray, that's like us, who have walked away from Christ. You're falling off a cliff because you're no longer with your shepherd. You're all alone and you have no one to protect you. So you are in harm. Number two, sheep are emotional and recognize the shepherd's voice. Sheep have this remarkable instinct for knowing the voice of their shepherd because they're emotional animals and they fear a stranger's voice and they'll run away, they'll flee. And since they are emotional, they also have this great ability to build friendships with other sheep but yet they get anxious and sad when their sheep friends are lost and go away or if they pass. And just like sheep, we have those same emotions. We get anxious, depressed, and distressed and feel sadness. But it's important for us to listen to our shepherd's voice to keep us calm in times of trouble and hardships and despair. Because otherwise, we could be let off by a stranger's voice and also encounter real harm when we don't. John 10, 27 says it perfectly. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. We should always follow Christ, no matter our circumstances or what we're going through. Third reason, sheep are not meant to carry burdens. This is a lot of hope right here, you guys. Have you ever seen a sheep carrying a pack on their back? No, because they were not meant to do so. They can't carry a heavy load, just like us. We were not meant to carry our burdens either. In fact, we are to give Jesus our heavy load so he can carry it for us. Psalm 55, 22 is perfect for that. It says, cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you. Number four, sheep will settle for less. That is us a lot of times. Because it says right here, it says, when sheep are thirsty, they will stop at a dirty puddle right in front of them instead of going for the clean still waters, just 10 feet ahead. Sadly, sheep are content with filth if it satisfies them at the moment. They stink and they never even know it because they lack discernment and judgment and don't know what is good for them. I wanna ask you this is how many of us have settled for less and not realize there was clean water just 10 feet ahead. So we settled for being wrong and living in the wrong moment just for filth for a temporary time. We are content sometimes with filth and don't know we stink. This is why we need a shepherd. 
He leads us to better things and cleans us up when no one else will even touch us. He gives us second chances. Psalm 23, one, two, one of my favorites about this. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. And the fifth reason why we're like sheep and the last, sheep are valuable. Sheep were treated as prized possessions in Jesus's day. You were counted a wealthy man if you owned large flocks because they provided meat, milk, and wool, and they also produced offspring. Shepherds also made tons of sacrifices because they wanted to make sure their flocks were protected and treated right. They knew it was their livelihood at stake. But how much precious are we than smelly sheep? God compares us to sheep in the Bible because he views us as priceless. So valuable that he was willing to give his life for us in John 1, it says, the next day he saw Jesus coming toward him and said, behold the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. In this passage of Matthew, all the sheep are followers of Christ, except that one that is lost. This parable is also recorded in Luke 15, four through seven, which says, suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, rejoice with me. I have found my lost sheep. I tell you in the same way, There will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. What a beautiful picture we paint right there of Jesus telling everyone that someone got saved and returned to him, to the great shepherd, the one lost, and he's rejoicing as he's so excited. As followers of Christ, you guys, as Pastor Dane's been talking, that we must lead others to Christ. That's one of our responsibilities as followers of Jesus Christ. Here are three that I want to read with you. Number one, pray for the lost and never give up on them as God never gives up on us. Two, lead them to Christ. And the third one, not allow them to sink, but bring them back to the surface and have them swim once again. Funny story about being lost and coming back to the Lord is before Brittany and I got married, back in the day when MapQuest was popular, it was huge. I I used to print out directions where I wanted to take Brittany because God knows I was awful with directions and I still am because I didn't want to get lost. I was horrible with directions. I wanted to know where I was going. In the same way, When we get lost or go astray from God, or maybe we don't even feel God, or we know someone that doesn't know God at all and he's a lost sheep, we must plug into our GPS wherever my shepherd wants me, wherever my shepherd goes, I want to follow. Because God is our navigation when his sheep are lost and we have no clue where to go. He leads us in the right direction, being the great shepherd he is. And he's the one that brings us back to the surface so we're able to swim again and our chains are lifted from our back and we feel as though we have a huge lift off of our shoulders and we're able to swim back to the surface once again. So now I ask you this, what causes some sheep to stray away or get lost? Isaiah 53, 6 tells us that we all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us have turned to our own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. This passage here describes the sin that we have in our hearts and that we have all turned aside from God's way to our own ways and we have all sinned. So the first reason how some sheep have strayed away or get lost One of the causes is, fill in the blank, 
lack of devotion. Say it again. Lack of devotion is one of the reasons that sheep stray away or get lost. The reason is because sheep need to follow their shepherd if they're going to do well. But often sheep do the opposite. They look down on the ground. They put their heads down and never look up to see where their great shepherd is. So when the shepherd calls, they don't pay attention, but instead go their own route and fail miserably. Isn't this just like us Christians too? We stray away from the Lord when we take our eyes off the Lord. This is very important. When I was prepping to speak, I believe that God really spoke to me in a great manner because this has happened to me before in my life. So if you could write this in your handout, if you're writing notes at home, you leave God out of your life, you miss the best thing in your life. You leave God out of your life, you mess, you miss, excuse me, the best thing in life. It's true. And another reason sheep stray away, number two, lack of discipline, and they get distracted. Sheep can get distracted so easily by many things like bushes, shrub, or it could be trails, rocks, or even other animals that take their eyes off of the shepherd. Church, (laughs) we're the same way. We may be watching the sermon here today and and the worship and praising God, but in the other hand, we get a Facebook alert on our phone and we're swiping on Facebook because we get a notification on our phone and that distracts us and takes us away from the word. So I have great news for you though. You could avoid that distraction. Then we must have discipline to stay on the right path and follow our shepherd. John 10, 14 says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep knows me. The third reason that sheep stray away is lack of discretion. Sheep get caught up with their eating. They forget where they are and they lose focus and they lose attention of where their shepherd is. And you guys, when we are dealt with bad circumstances. Many times too, we lose track of our shepherd due to lack of discretion. But guys, I don't know what you're going through today, but God does. I don't know what you're gonna go through, but God does. But we must recognize the saying that so many of us say, that God is good all the time. He is good, you guys, when times are easy. He is good when times are ugly and bad. And he is good through the pain. God truly is always good. But if we truly believe that, then you believe this, which is next in the handout. If you only worship and follow God when circumstances are good, we are worshiping our circumstances, not God. Got to settle in for a while. Once sheep start wandering away, they start wandering further and further. And once this occurs, they're in great danger because sooner or later, that wandering sheep runs out of good pasture and sins leaves you away from the pasture you need for your soul. And when a sheep wanders, you have no protection and guidance, and you're off by yourself with the terrain as the sheep is without the protector, their shepherd. Wandering also means to roam, and roaming means you are going in the wrong direction because you are sinning, you are living in sin. And in society today, we try to make wrongs acceptable. For example, we call abortion, women's rights, and my body, my choice, instead of murder. We call homosexuality love between two people. We call premarital sex acceptable instead of calling these things for what they are. They're wrong and they're sins. If I'm being honest today, many of us are stubborn, prideful, 
try to be blind, selfish even, and lazy and self-centered. And we don't want to turn away from our sins. And we'd rather be stuck in our sin than come back with our Lord and Savior, our shepherd. And this is something. Are you miserable? Are you miserable in your sin? If so, that's a good thing. I know you're thinking, why? What do you mean? Because anything less than a right relationship with God should make you feel miserable and want to change. That's good. If you have wandered into sin, into wickedness, saying, you know what? This is not who I am. This isn't who I want to be. There's a reason why you're not joyful and God is tugging at your heart to change. F.W. Norwood says something so valuable along those lines. He says, life's greatest tragedy is to lose God and not miss him. To lose God when you had him at one moment in time, but now you don't miss him. There's nothing, nothing worse than that. Until you repeat lies to yourself, saying you're fine. When, when everyone around you, if you have anyone around you, if you haven't burned out all your relationships because of your depression or how mad of a person you are or how you have no joy, people could tell that you have wandered away by the way that you're acting, by the way that you look, by just the face that you have, their facial expressions. You're not okay, but you're whispering lies to yourself that you're fine, but really you're not because you're missing the best thing of all, and that's our shepherd. As I said earlier, we have all gone astray from God at one point in time in our lives and try to do life on our own way and in our own terms. Romans 3, 11, 12 tells us that. It says there is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They have together become worthless. There is no one who does good. Not even one. We are lost to God when we don't do what we were created to do, which is to love Christ, worship Christ, and to serve Christ as our Lord and Savior and to follow and obey Christ. And what's awesome is we all need a Savior to save us from sin and damnation. Paul makes it very clear that no sinner is exempt from God's righteous condemnation. But he reminds us that there is not one person who is righteous, but the great news for the one who goes astray is the love of God. Because Jesus cares so much about the lost, he forgives and rejoices, rejoices. He's overflowed with joy when the one lost is now found and comes back to him where they belong and is now a child of God. Jesus wants nothing more than for you and I to go to heaven with him. He seeks after all. He goes after both male, female, both young and old, broken, depressed. He goes for everyone. And the shepherd, so important in this passage, he counts every one of his flock and he knows the exact amount. He knows there's a hundred because he cares about them all equally. He loves them all so much, but he recognizes one's missing. So what does he do? What's fascinating is he missed the sheep. He missed that one sheep so bad he wanted him to return home. So what does Jesus do being the great shepherd he is? He himself went after it. The shepherd goes after his sheep, the lost sheep, because he feels as though it's his task and hand to find you and bring you back. Now, as Pastor Dayton was talking for these last few weeks about the lost, what are we doing as sheep and followers of Christ? Are we going after the lost too? Because we should, our hearts should break knowing that they're going to go to hell. We want them to go to heaven. And we should be rejoicing when they follow Christ and come back to the Lord and Savior. It's amazing about God. He knows for this sinner, this one here, the Lord knows that he took a different route and he will find you and follow you. The Lord knows 
when you've fallen into sin and when you aren't living for him. The shepherd, the shepherd relies heavily on two things, his voice and the willingness of the sheep to hear. Because the further the sheep is from the shepherd, the harder it will be for the sheep to answer and to respond. Are you lost? Are you lost here this morning, taking a detour and not hearing, or maybe you are actually hearing the Lord's voice, but you're not following his voice because you have wandered so far. The great news is we have a savior who's ready to catch you, but you must follow his lead. Do you think God's hiding from you? Maybe you raised your hand, but I want a follow-up question and see if your hand's still raised at home after this. Or maybe is it that you are the one hiding from God? Because I'm here 100% to tell you that God doesn't hide from us, but we hide from him. Just like the sheep, we bury our head in the sand at times when struggles come our way and we get lost. In verse 13, it says, God's love is kind, it's patient, and his love is seeking. Thank you, Jesus, that he doesn't cast us to the side for our wrongdoing, our shortcomings, and failures. Because you understand it's the grace and mercy of Jesus to heal our blemishes and forgive us of our sins. When we hear the reaction of Jesus saying he rejoices over it more than the 99 that never went astray, does it, does it mean that he favored the rebellious, the less faithful over the, the faithful 99? I want to answer that for you. No, the thing is, is that the lost sheep he's talking here ran the risk of being lost forever, and he didn't want that to be the case. I used to lose my backpacks, for instance, at school. And when they would appear once again, the thing that makes it so joyful when you lose something is that it ran the risk of being gone forever. Just like this one sheep, it ran the risk of being gone and lost forever. So there's this great joy and rejoiceful when the sheep comes back and is no longer in danger, no longer in harm. Think about the amount of effort, time, the shepherd put into that sheep. So much of the shepherd's time and effort and suffering was invested into the sheep to make sure he wouldn't go astray and to make sure they're supposed to be with him. It's not because one's worse or one's better. It's because that was what was, was lost to Christ was now found to him. Let me re-say that. It's because that what was lost to Christ was now found to him and that what was lost to us is now available to us. As I read earlier in Luke 15, 7, it says, the Lord has the shepherd come home to his friends and family and says, rejoice with me. I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. We now know what this passage means, that they were lost, but now they come back to the Lord. The one that was lost now comes back to the great shepherd and he's rejoicing with his friends and telling everyone what just happened because he's so ecstatic. And as we follow up in verse 14, it says in the same way, your father in heaven is not willing that any of these little ones should perish because he wants us to inherit heaven with him and be a part of his family. What a loving God. Christ here in 14 uses the term little ones or child, which means believers. It doesn't mean a young person. It means believers. These verses, Matthew 18, 12 through 14, are a security that a believer has in Christ. We know that Jesus is very protective of his own children, that we are protected by God because Jesus came to save, not to lose his own sheep. He came to save, not to lose his own sheep. 
So the father is overjoyed to have his children back. And this is one of my favorite passages about this. And the angels in heaven are rejoicing, it says in Luke 15, 10. It says, in the same way I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. And that just brings me so much happiness. The angels are singing and rejoicing and dancing and just full of joy that one sinner returned back to the presence of God. I want to end with these last things. I pray that, Jesus, if you're far, that you would draw us near to you. If we are far from God, that we would come back to you. When you speak, may we follow you. Where you lead, may we follow your lead, even if it's hard. Because we don't want to worship our circumstances. We want to worship you because you truly are God is good all the time. And when, when maybe we fall and we're in a dark place in our life, May we wander away, maybe. May we come back to our shepherd because we don't want to wander so far away that we can't hear his voice anymore and don't return. Because just like sheep, we have no direction without Jesus. None. Ezekiel 34, 12 says, as a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered. So I will seek out my sheep and I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. See, Jesus uses this parable of the lost sheep to show that the kingdom of God is accessible to all, even those who were sinners or strayed away from God's path. Some of you watching here today, I'm certain, or maybe you'll catch the replay. Maybe you won't even watch, but some of you might have been that one. And it's time to return back. It's time, and you know it. You know that you're living in sin because maybe for some of you, you knew God, but you've left him. And I pray that today you make a decision to come back to Christ, to hear the shepherd's voice. And then for some of you, maybe you never knew God. Maybe you are just living in sin and you don't even know that you are filthy, as I said earlier. The great news is you have a decision to make. It's your decision. You have a choice to make. When you pass, you could be a follower of Jesus Christ. Accept him into your heart right now. Accept him and also believe that he is Lord and Savior and choose to follow him, choose to follow him. So I just wanna pray with you. And if you believe that, if you accept Jesus Christ right now as your Lord and savior, and you wanna spend eternity with him, and you believe that he's your Lord and savior, and you choose to follow him, and you wanna do a 180 because you've been roaming around for way too long and you want to come back to the presence of God or you want to experience Jesus for the first time, please reach out to us and I want to pray over you right now. Heavenly Father, I want to pray for the lost. Lord, it's just remarkable that Pastor Dane's been talking about the lost because no one likes to be in darkness, being lost being walked around, hitting these things because when we're in darkness, being lost, we don't know where we're going, Father God. So I pray for this person right now and these people who are in darkness, wandering around and lost, Lord, without their shepherd, that they would hear your voice, that they would choose to repent, believe in you and accept you as their Lord and Savior for the first time, Lord. And I pray for those, many of those have backslid and we see numbers at churches declining at many places. It's because we need to be revived, Father God, and I pray that you revive us. I pray that after we hear the message and the worship, it's not me, but that they seek you, Lord. That they seek the good shepherd and they come back to you and stop roaming in their own direction and they choose to follow you for the rest of their lives, Lord. Sure, circumstances will be tough, but it's way tougher when we don't have you in our life because we know that the outcome is damnation, spending eternity in hell instead of heaven. Lord, 
I pray for when that day comes to to see you face to face, that you say, well done, good and faithful servant. But in the meantime, that we choose to follow you all the days of our lives here on earth and be good sheep for you and follow your path. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.